Dreadeff presents Healthcare Stories Louise Custer and Charlie Custer Part 4 Interviewed at the Ed Roberts Campus, Berkeley, California October 2012 I think we need to train our physicians, our young physicians coming up through medical school. There have to be courses. I had the privilege of being invited to speak to the nursing school at a, a hospital here in San Francisco. I was with another uh, group of parents and there were nursing students there and my expertise was valued immensely in that two-hour session. We need to have every young medical student, every young nursing student who goes through the system educated with serious coursework. It's important to have on the exams that license and certify these new physicians questions that actually show the, the insights they've gained and the expertise they've garnered by being exposed to parents, disabled young people, advocates, and the work that a lot of the agencies are doing so that these medical students have a much broader sense of how at risk these patients are and how the quality of the medical care that they can provide is going to be wholly determined by their learning early on that this is a very different population and requires a much more collaborative approach. I think many physicians do not understand. Many um, psychiatrists do not appreciate this complex interaction of the behavioral and the medical, the side effects from the multitude of drugs that our young people are taking, that one drug that causes a reaction that you didn't anticipate. So you've got people who don't necessarily have a psychiatric diagnosis and those that do have a diagnosis with nowhere to go when they go into crisis. My, my ardent plea to the, to the policymakers to the physicians, to the ad advocacy community, is that we need to work together to create more settings into which you can bring our complex, seizure-ridden young people when they have a behavioral breakdown. And today, if Charlie has one of these breakdowns, he will have to be treated at home we will have to hire nursing staff. We will have to rely on the neurologists and the physicians that are in the wings. But we're going to be, forgive me, flying by the seat of our pants in a very dangerous setting because no hospital will take my son for longer than a few days to simply stabilize him in the short term for the whole trajectory of as many weeks as it takes to bring him back to baseline that will be on our heads, and that is not a safe situation. Of all the issues in the medical arena that concern me, it is perhaps the failure to correctly diagnose what's going on and have specialists who can address it thoughtfully and accurately. We also just need much more cultural literacy, that, that, that everyone who works with our community somehow learns from the heart as well as from the mind how to understand the simple needs that go unattended. The anesthesiologist wishes he hadn't done what he did, but he panicked because he was afraid of Charlie. He was afraid of the situation. He was afraid of my concern. And those fears stand in the way of creating this, this cultural connection and understanding that then will bring a better diagnosis, bring quicker management of serious problems. Healthcare Stories made possible with generous support from the Special Hope Foundation. For more information, visit 
dreadf.org slash healthcare dash stories. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, share alike, 3.0, unported license.